Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I have the pleasure once again to speak to Manny Pacheco about all things Hollywood forgotten and some near forgotten. And some not forgotten. Manny, good to see you. Good to see you guys. You're looking now, good. I'm doing well, Manny. Recently, I was very saddened when James Kahn mm. passed. He had a long, wonderful career, including my favorite uh, of his performances in The Godfather as, as Sonny. Mm. But he did lots and lots of different stuff. And he passed away. One of the things that I was surprised to hear after his passing is that he had mob ties. I, I was surprised. Mm. Now, maybe... I was just ignorant, you know, but in my head in the clouds, but I was surprised to hear that. Um, and it made me think, of course, that you would know that long list of actors, directors, characters that have had mob ties in the movies over the over the century. Oh, absolutely. James Kahn, I think his career was hurt because he had mob ties, because they were helping him pick his movies, and he was turning down, I mean amazing movies and uh he preferred to go for more of the action mob like movies that may may have been modest successes i mean not counting godfather of course yeah uh, but i think his career could have even been bigger because he was that kind of a star he was he was very special but um but it kind of tapered off you know in the in the 80s and 90s i think it could have been a lot bigger he did have mob ties and he and he established those mob ties when he was doing research for the godfather Ah, the mob ties were developed because he he was not uh, Italian. He, he was he was not Italian. So right. there you go. And so um, but he did develop those ties and, and they became lifelong ties as well. And, you know, if you if you look at movies like Goodfellas and Godfather, I mean, way too many to name, but many of the supporting players all had ties to the mob. Uh, huh. just, just, a, just a number of them. I mean, some didn't. I, I, I've never heard that De Niro or, or Pesci had ties to the mob. But uh, but Martin Scorsese drew up, grew up in a tough neighborhood sure. um, and saw a lot of mob action. I mean, if you look at the, um, the movie A Bronx Tale, it's basically an autobiography of what Scorsese had seen as a child. So, I mean, that, that should give you an, some indication of his relationship with the mob. But yeah. I think also that uh, there's a... a, a, a Although many, many of the mob like to stay out of uh, the limelight uh, up until uh, the the 80s and 90s, you know, Dapper Dan and Wadon or whatever his name was. But uh, there, I think there's always been, uh, if uh, not a direct relationship, it's just having celebrities around like Sinatra. Okay. Yeah. Like, okay. Notorious for having relationships and right. not that he did anything wrong with them. But Marilyn Monroe was somehow always talked about as having ties uh, to the mob. By the way, back to James Caan, my favorite of his all time. I think it was a made-for-TV Brian song. That was my favorite James Caan movie. You know, you, you, it's sad if I had to pick one because you guys are going to think, wow, that's just such an average choice. But I just love him in El Dorado with John mm. Wayne. I liked him in a Western. So, so there you yeah. go. He was good but, there too. Yep. But here, let me let me let me offer this proposition, and you tell me what you think. Now, I'm just gonna put it out here, and then you can just give me your your idea. If you appeared in Vegas any time after Bugsy Siegel created the the whole system of of of, uh, of these hotels and casinos, if you appeared and were headliners or worked in any of the rooms, most likely you had a tie to the mob. Sure, whether you wanted to or not. Right. And that probably went on probably until the late 70s, at least, maybe the early 80s, yeah. when, when Vegas pretty much changed and became more regulated. Uh, but I think in the 40s, 50s, 60s, any headliner you see at the Flamingo or the Tropicana, these, were, these actors all had mob ties. These performers all had ties to the mob. Well, it, look, Manny, that's understandable. The, the, one of the things... Bugsy Siegel did was threw money <laughs> at talent to get the draw the crowds to Las Vegas. That's right. So and, and, and you and didn't he have a... to be you didn't have to be a mobster to accept a big paycheck and go to Las Vegas. 
but you would become friends with them. That's right. Whether you liked it or not. And and he uh, he had a friend in Hollywood who would recruit, and that friend was George Raft. No mm. kidding. Yeah, George Raft wasn't would would you say a mobster? You know, and, and often he played a really good guy in the Warner Brothers pictures, but he definitely had a friend in Bugsy Siegel. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and, and George Raft had t definite ties to the mob. I mean, he had yeah. Los Angeles ties to the mob. Uh, um, was it was his name Mickey Cohen? But it was his name was Mickey, but it was it sure, was a Los Mickey, I think it was Mickey Cohen. Yeah, Mickey Cohen. Uh, and Bugsy Siegel, you know, George Raft, definite actor with definite ties to the mob. I mean, they can they can be uh, they can be very much uh, proven. It can be proven. Yeah. But getting back to Sinatra, and I don't want to uh, not mention what you know Art was mentioning. And and uh, Sinatra again would appear regularly in Vegas. I mean, he was uh, tied, I think, in all sorts of ways in trying to get the mob uh, money to support John Kennedy's uh, election to, to the presidency. And when his brother, Robert Kennedy, of course, went after the mob, I mean, they, they felt very betrayed. And in fact, that pretty much um, ended the relationship between Kennedy and Sinatra, believe it or not, because he felt that he was betrayed as well. So there was, I think, I think the, uh, the mobster was Sam Giancana. So, I mean, there was definite uh, a relationship there where money was going to fund a political campaign. And yeah. Sinatra was right at the center of this. So just just keep that in mind as well. Interesting. Another, of course, the, the, I was going to say the mob has always been interested in entertainment. Um, I remember, uh, long before our time, but I remember, uh, and I can't think of the name of the movie, but the movie was based on the book uh, done by Joe E. Lewis, who was a well-known comedian, mm. actor, and had, I think it, it, he, he was a jealous affair with some mobster's girlfriend, and he got his throat cut, didn't die. And, and he survived, yeah. He survived. And he survived, and, and always talked like this after that. The Joker is wild. The, thank you. Mm. Great movie, by the way. Right. Great movie. And he but, definitely um, ties to the mob, absolutely. Sure, but that was, now that was nightclub, really, the mob in the nightclub. But the, we know the mob went into jukeboxes, they went into movies, or where um, there was cash. Yeah, wherever, they, wherever you can yeah. manipulate the, the uh, receipts. Right, and there was another tie to the mob, too, uh, just so you know. Uh, and Doris Day played the character uh, in 1955. Um, and the name of the movie was Love Me or Leave Me. And, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the tie was uh, uh, the gangster with Ruth Edding, the famous uh, torch singer of the 1920s and 30s. Yes. So I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Ruth Edding, and um, that tie was r remarkable. Uh, James Cagney plays the character of Martin Moe the Gimp Snyder. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, that, that, there was a definite tie there. The movie is, is fabulous, by the way, and, and the song Love Me or Leave Me is, is an absolute torch standard. And yeah. Doris Day was very uncomfortable about playing such an edgy role because she really had a very uh, pristine um, yes. uh, camera uh, persona. Yeah. And right. so, um, yeah, it, it, Love Me or Leave Me, I think that that's a great movie that, that talks about, um, just like The Joker is Wild, uh, that talks about the ties of, of famous uh, performers, maybe, yeah. as, yeah. or actors, but definitely performers and singers, and, and, they're, and they're tied to the mob. And, and, kind and of Hollywood has always yeah. loved yeah, mob yeah. stories, gangster stories, because right. they're yeah. full of drama. Right, right. What, what were you going to say, Art? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, as a general, I've heard this before, and I just listened to a documentary uh, or an interview with uh, Coppola uh, in the last week or two, and uh, uh, he talked about The Godfather and things like that. He says, so they said, who, who is your, uh, I think for Reed Zakaria, interviewed him. He says, so who are your biggest fans? He says, anybody in the mob love this stuff. <laughs> Castro, Gaddafi. <laughs> and he just went, you know, uh, uh, talking about all the strong arms and the, and the mob bosses who uh, uh, love the story and love how uh, they were depicted. They never took offense to it. Uh, so right. uh, there may be one or two exceptions, but it seems that uh, 
they like being portrayed in the strong armed way that they were uh, in, in these movies. So, well, if I can say, before the cameras were rolling today, uh, Art was also telling us a wonderful story about Jerry Orbach that we shouldn't leave in the mm -hmm. cutting room floor. So, why don't you why don't you give us that one, Art? Well, yeah, my I, I don't know the the full story. First of all, I'm a huge fan of him. He was a, 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 a he was a a, a, a well respected Broadway musical actor. Yep. Uh, he was on Law and Order for what, 20, 15, 20 seasons, and then even went back to Broadway uh, uh, and uh, just picked it up where he left it off. He unfortunately died very early from, a, I think, a heart attack. He had a, uh, you know, today we, you know, he was probably around 70, so that's kind of young. Uh, but, it, but he uh, apparently witnessed a, a major rub out uh, of a mob <laughs> boss and uh the cops had him there as a witness and he just wouldn't talk and not because he apparently not because he was afraid of the mob it's just that he had a relationship with them and he didn't talk uh so i mean i don't know the full story i uh, appreciate him as as a performer i've watched him a lot but i right. think uh, uh he he's another one that you know maybe on the peripheries uh he grew up in new york so there's no reason for him not to have traveled in those circles and entertainment circles. So, uh, well, you make a good point right there. If you grew up in Chicago, New York, I mean, there are even LA, I mean, yeah. there are definite mob ties, Vegas, you know, I mean, obviously, sure. yeah. And New Orleans, let's not forget New Orleans. Right, right. Yeah, um, Matt, Manny, just a quick correction. I'm not sure that you were correct when you said that um, A Bronx Tale is Martin Scorsese's biography. I think it was written by Charles Chaz Palminteri, wasn't it? You know, you might be right on that. I think we'd have to look that up. You're right. No, we'd no, I, I, I'm up. almost positive you're right. I think it's his his uh, biography. I'm glad you made that correction because Chaz Scorsese directed it. Yeah, Scorsese, it was Palminteri's yes. entree to the world of film. And he's a gifted writer. He's written a number of things. He's yes. he's definitely a behind the scenes kind of actor. And I think you're absolutely right. And I will tell you one story that I know I'm right about is that when it was cast, uh, Parliamentary was going to play the De Niro role and De Niro was going to play the gangster. And, and De Niro says, no, no, no. This is a story. You need to show the ferocity of the gangster. You were there. I'm happy to play in support the thankless role of the father. And mm. and to his credit, uh, Paul Monteri said, "Oh, okay. Well, we could switch." And they did. They switched. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and it was it was just a, a fabulous, beautifully told movie. I had a chance to see it recently. I hadn't seen it in years. Almost forgot the story, but as it unfolded, I was just enamored with the yeah. the, the storytelling. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful film. You know, right. I, I, as we end now, though, John, I, I need to take you to the woodshed, and so oh. not to over embarrass you, overly embarrass you. I'll wait till after we're done here. But uh, of the hundreds, I think it's over a hundred interview we we've, we've done directly with Manny, plus uh, maybe three dozen that we've done at various film festivals. And in fact, we have another one coming up pretty soon. Um, the joy that one or two of our listeners get in pointing out an error that Manny made. There's so few and far between, and you have to steal the pleasure I from one it. of our viewers. So I'm so sorry. Okay, it's the woodshed for you. No belt. We're not going to do a belt. We don't do corporal punishment. But, you know, I may make you eat some rotten tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. All right. How do you follow that? At least, at least art didn't rub you out. So that I guess oh, there's that. No, no, oh, no. You dirty rat, you. <laughs> Look at me, Ma. Top of the world. <laughs> For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.